Welcome. So students ask me all the time, how do I do long division? And it's like, ah, gets to you, right? So I did this problem synthetic division, but a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, when you're doing synthetic division, it gets with fractions, and then students are like, oh my god, I don't understand long division, and then I don't gotta understand fractions, and it's like, what do I do next? So let's go through this with long division. It's not that bad. What you're gonna do, remember, set it up, long division. And I'll go through the main mistakes that students make when doing these types of problems, and then hopefully all you can do is just avoid them. So here we go, we're gonna set up like a long division problem. Remember, when using long division, we're only gonna take the first term of our divisor and divide it into our dividend. So I say 3x, does that divide into 6x squared? And you say, yes, it does. It divides in there 2x squared times. The reason being it divides in there 2x times because 2x squared times 3x gives you 6x cubed back, right? If you can't multiply it back, then you know it doesn't divide evenly into it. <sighs> Jeez, okay. But here's where, it makes, here's where students make the mistake. I know I'm only dividing the first term into that first term, but then once I get my part of my quotient, I multiply this times both of these terms. So 2x squared times 3x is 6x cubed. 2x squared times negative 2 is going to give you a negative 4x squared. Now, here's where the next big mistake is. So you have to multiply by both of them. Then you have to subtract both rows. So watch what I do. I put parentheses around the whole row, and I put a subtraction sign, all right? The reason why I do this, because so many students forget to subtract the whole row. 6x squared cubed minus 6x cubed is 0x cubed, which is 0. Uh, negative 16x squared minus a negative 4x squared, which now is a plus 4x squared, is now going to give you a positive, or I'm sorry, that's positive, so it's going to be a positive 12x squared. Then you look, so then, and then 17x minus 0x is just going to give you a plus 17x. Negative 6 minus 0 is just going to still give you negative 6. All right, so now I say just 3x divided into 12x squared. And you say, yes, it does, Mr. McLogan. 3x divides into 12x squared 4x times. Well, how do you know that? Prove it. 4x times 3x gives you uh, 12x squared, 12x. And then 4x times negative 2 gives you a negative 8. Did I mess this up again? I don't know. I can't remember. I'm like brain's already hurting me right now. Um, that becomes a positive 4, ah, which is a negative 12. I did. Ugh. I thought about it and then I wrote it down. God, I'm gonna kill me. Okay, so that's a negative four. Negative four times three x is a negative 12x. And negative four times two is going to be a positive eight. Oh my God. Okay, so now we again subtract the two rows, right? But remember, put in parentheses and subtract. Negative 12x squared minus negative 12x squared is going to give you a zero x squared, which is zero. 17x minus 8x, right, because negative 4x times negative 2 is, an, is a positive 8x. So 17x minus 8x is now going to give you a, uh, I don't know, a 9x. And then we have, uh, and then negative 6 minus 0 is just going to be negative 6. So there's 3x squared, there's 3x divided into 9x. Of course it does. It goes in there three times, right? Plus 3. So 3 times 3x is 9x. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Subtract the whole rows, and you get 0 again. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Your quotient, or the answer to this problem, is we have 6x cubed minus 6x squared, 16x squared plus 17x minus 6 divided by 3x minus 2 divides into there 2x squared minus 4x plus 3 times. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.